If you're getting a lot of white smoke, could be a head gasket, coolant problem. We could be getting coolant in the combustion side of the engine. Um, if it's dark blue, black, it could be an air filter problem. We might not be getting enough air into the system. Um, so it, I strongly suggest easy things first. Check your air filter, see if it's plugged. Um, if you would like to just remove the cap, remove the outer, not the inner, just the outer, start it up, don't work with it, and see if the smoke clears. That's an easy indicator. If it is, then change your air filter. If it's uh, a lot of eye burning, uh, blue smoke, could be a fuel filter. Do a good inspection on the fuel filter. Look at your service time. How long it's been since you serviced or where you got your fuel from last time. Um, some of these, you'll definitely see if there's water in them. That's a big sign. So, and if it don't have that, like I say, check your dates when you were serviced last. Might be worth, or call your cat dealer and ask them to. It don't cost. It all basically boils down to a few things. One of, and most common, with just about all the engine problems is fuel and air. If you got a good fuel system, good air system, you should get good fuel economy with it. Um, the only thing is, you know, keep in mind on your fuel cap. If it don't breathe right, she ain't getting the right amount or too much fuel. So keep that in mind. Um, if you're running in abnormal conditions, uh, we found in previous problems with that, attachments, running mower decks, that can be a high fuel efficient system. It demands a lot, 90% of the time it's running. So keep that in mind, customers, it's very important. I would check for fuel leaks, which is part of your daily checklist. Make sure you ain't leaking no fuel. Um, if your air fillers are good, your fuel fillers are good, consult your Caterpillar dealer. I strongly suggest that. Um, we have service letters, stuff like that, that come out that there may be adjustments that we can do. So it's very crucial. And when you call your dealership, give them the model the serial number and the hours off it. Very, that's what everything depends on is that serial number and the hours off that machine. So that's very crucial. Check your fuel system, your air system. Because a plug air filter, you're not getting rid of, you're not getting the minor proper amount of air to the system. Um, check the viscosity of oil you're using and how long it's been from the last service. Believe it or not, it is very crucial that in the weight of oil that you use. In the past history, a lot of customers were told to use 15W40. Caterpillar's done a big study on this and they believe on the Midwest and that to run, to get better fuel efficiency, better performance to run with a 10W30 in a top grade high detergent oil. Very crucial on that end. We need to, you need to isolate the problem down. Is it an undercarriage problem? Do you got a stone caught in the boggy wheel that's causing friction and lugging the machine down? Is your dry sprockets working right? Are they turning right? You need to check that. Track tension. That's another thing. We, you need to try to isolate it down to help your dealer to make it more cost efficient. That is the big thing. So if you don't think it's in the undercarriage, you're not hearing no noise, nothing like that. Maybe it's an engine performance or a hydraulic performance. Um, that you may have to call your Caterpillar dealer and see about getting the machine brought in the shop, which we give you a flat rate on determining what is going on 
and isolate it down, call you back. But yeah, in the wintertime, you are gonna hear more noises out of the hydraulic system. Everything is shrink down. Oil's harder to move. So um, try to isolate some of these problems if you have to call your dealer. So when I start it up, when it's real cold, I hear a bad whining noise. Maybe we should look for your, when your service was done on your hydraulic filter. You may have a plug filter. So things like that, if you can tell us a little bit about it, we can help you isolate the problem and maybe not have to bring it in. The biggest thing that we found with skid steers, they think it's like a car. You start them up, release the parking brake and take off. We strongly suggest start them up, get out, let it run for at least 15 minutes, let everything come up close to operating temperature. Then proceed with your day. On the big machines, they will usually start really well even, even in the winter time. But this all CAD equipment has a pre-starting instructions. You've got a glow plug harness that's on your engine, okay? On the smaller skid steers, 257s, 216s, the smaller engines, even at 50 degrees, when you turn the key on, you may have to hit your um, preheater for the engine and just count to three. Release it, start the machine. On the bigger ones, um, they'll usually start up to 30, 20, 30 degrees. They'll start right out. But there's instructions in your um, operation maintenance book that will tell you, on, you know, if it's 10 degrees outside, you need to hit your um, ether aid or your ether start thing and hold it for just so long. So if that don't work, 99% of the time, it's either a blown fuse, which is usually located in the cab, and it's illustrated on the back side what every fuse is doing, or your glow plug harness here. It could be unplugged in the back, you might have knocked it loose with a branch or something, or it's got a little corrosion on there. They use the all four cylinders. Um, you might want to remove that. Unhook the wire off the back side, clean it up with a little emery cloth, try it again. If you got a tester, you can check them. Make sure you're getting current through them. But 90% of the time, it's either a blown fuse or they're not holding it long enough or this plate. With all your maintenance done, and you're still not getting your performance that you need, uh, you don't quite have enough on your lift and your tilt's a little weak, we strongly suggest you don't have the capability at the job to do it and do it right. We strongly recommend you bring it to the dealer. We will put gauges on it. We will check your standby pressure, your marginal pressure, and your hydraulic pressure. Your relief valves might have backed off a little bit or over time, you know, it's gotten a little weak. Within, usually within an hour or so, we can usually determine what the problem is. And we can, and why we're there, we usually do the adjust, adjustment right there. Your hydraulics, 200 low on your main hydraulic system will make night and day difference on your performance as far as what you're capable of lifting and how you're performing on the job. Lack of maintenance, bad air filter system can cause a turbocharger problem. You've restricted it of air and clean air. Um, if that dirt starts getting through the filters, it will take a turbocharger out. Then which will in turn cause internal problems. Wear rings on your pistons. Um, it's basically maintenance. That's something that you gotta always push to your workers. That is the big thing. You need to know why. Why did it blow? Did I rub a hole in it? The caterpillar not route it properly. That is the main thing. That's what we have to do. We have a Sims that we, when we do a repair on your machine, 
we see that there was a bad routing on it, or whatever, depending on your warranty and everything else, um, we notify CAT through our SIMS program, through CAT, the stating this X hose when it was installed or you don't have enough room for that hose and over time it rubbed a hole in it. The reason 90% of the time on a skid steer, the way this radiator is designed, it's pulling air off the engine up. Unfortunately, all the dust, the grass, the leaves, everything comes around the back. It is very crucial. These are designed to run at 120 degree temperature, day and night, and never overheat. There's usually a reason why, and I'm sorry to say it's usually on the maintenance end of it. It may look good here, oh, you see a few leaves, but look up inside on your cores, on your radiator, and they will be plugged solid full. Keep your levels up, keep your additives in this system, on this new preventant, you know, the extended life coolant, like you do on your car, in your maintenance book, it'll tell you for how many hours or how many years that is good for. And it keeps the condition of your radiator cool. It keeps them clean. So I would strongly suggest on skid steers that you do keep an eye on the inside of that radiator. The first thing we need to do is when we're going into snow removal is a complete service. We strongly recommend you bring it to the dealer because we'll do the oil samples, we'll give the whole machine a visual inspection. Get it cleaned up for the winter use. Plugged air filters, uh, old oil, bad fuel, uh, that's going to be the first problem on the first cold day. The biggest thing we see higher failures in the winter is lack of simple maintenance and startup. We strongly recommend if it's 10 below the zero outside, go out there, start that machine up, start it up, get everything, get your heater going, get it warming up, go outside, take a good visual inspection of that machine. Don't even try to move it. It's not a car. It's got to um, move a lot of oil through that hydraulic system. So when you start it up, let it run. If it's zero degrees, let it run up, warm up for at least, at least 20 minutes to a half an hour. Very crucial. You start raising that loader frame up and down, you're pushing very thick oil. You can have failures on hoses and hydraulic pumps. So it's very crucial that you guys just let them run. I understand they warm up fast when you're running them, but just sitting there idling gets all the oil moving, gets that engine oil lubed up. Strongly recommend a good warm up right now. If you're in doubt, call the dealer, ask them. It's simple, it's fast, and you'll get the answer you need. 